G'day, my name is Joseph, and today I'm here with my wonderful daughter, Kimberly. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to take some time to minister to 10 people. Um, so, uh, Sunday, a week ago, uh, when we were coming back from church, Kimmy wasn't there with us. She uh, went to another function. Uh, me and Shannon and Amy and uh, Hannah were driving in a car. Uh, and we were in a car accident where our car tumbled uh, about four times. And the Lord was so good to us. He, uh, Shannon and Amy and Hannah, the Lord just put his angels and protected them. They didn't really hit anything. Shannon had a little bit of a cut. Uh, Amy's neck where the seatbelt caught her on the neck uh, was sore. Um, Hannah came out without a scratch. Yeah. Hey. yeah. So she said she was a little stiff uh, with all the tumbling. Uh, but with me, uh, when I was in a car, I actually felt like this pressure on my shoulders. And I was lying in my bed thinking about it. I know God was holding me in a seat because the moment the car started falling, all the windows burst out uh, and there was just sand and glass going through the car. Uh, and I was actually sitting forward in a seat. I wasn't driving. Uh, and as I was sitting forward, I, I was reading something. Uh, so I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't ready. I didn't brace myself in any way. But I just felt that seat. But in the process, I did uh, have whiplash. So I hit my head on the dash in the front. And I then my head went backwards. Um, so in the process, uh, my head swelled up. And um, I really hurt my shoulder. My shoulder actually pulled out a little bit. So I got nerve damage right here. Uh, so, you know, the doctors, they said to me, nerve damage can take anywhere between six months to a year for your, your hand to be able to function again. And so we are now um, seven, eight, nine days. And I can already start to open and close my hand. I can pick my arm up. Now, my arm is still very sore, but the rate at which I'm recovering is staggering fast. Um, and so every time when I lie in my bed, I just lie there and I just engage the Lord and I see how the Lord come and He hugs me. And even yesterday evening, I felt just on my back like this heat as if God was uh, working on me. So I know the Lord is amazing when it comes to healing and you know stuff like this happens to you but you put your trust in the Lord and the Lord is faithful to to uh, work with you so about a week ago if you looked at my eyes both my eyes was like swollen like this and completely blue so I still got a little bit of a blueness here underneath my eye but um, I, I can't forever hide from this camera because you know part of us being healthy and whole and functioning in the call that God has for us. is we have to do what God has called us. And I know the Lord gave me a word in 2019 that people need personal ministry. And, uh, you know, it's always easier to give corporate words. You go and stand in front of a big crowd in a church. You give them a corporate word. That's what God is saying to the country. This is what God's saying to the community. But to give an individual word is hard work because it's you know every person and there's lots of people there's a lot of work but i know the lord said to me i must do it now kimberly she's my daughter she didn't plan to do all of this <laughs> but i said to her please kimmy god gave me this massive job you have to help me and when was it about a year ago that you started helping us two years ago yeah, about a year ago, Kimi, you know, and you must know the first time when she came, she immediately flown a spirit because Kimi is always someone that's very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. But, you know, how to articulate yourself and you get the pictures and people get to know you and you're on a camera. So it was a big deal for her. Um, so Kimi is also growing spiritually in the process, although she's always, even from young, uh, I think Kimi was two years old when she prayed in tongues. She could pray in tongues before she could talk in English. You know, so she was like always a very quick, quick learner. Uh, and of course, Amy, she, she doesn't even, you know, you can wake her any time of the day and she'll immediately see in the spirit. So uh, the Lord has really blessed me 
with children that are very sensitive to the Holy Spirit and even my other kids that just don't like the camera. That's why I'm not here. But I'm going to convince them at some point to come and sit here with me. Okay, so I I don't always talk about this. Uh, I don't want to every video talk about it. But I thought, let me just say something about what all happened with me. Um, so today, we're not going to prophesy a long time. Uh, there's 10 people. I, I see your comments. And you know, when, when people comment, it, it so encourages me. It m makes me feel, yes, I can continue to teach God's word and to prophesy to people. Because I know that's the call that God is on my life. Um, you know, sometimes people even donate a little bit of money uh, into my PayPal. Uh, and it really so helps me and my family. Because, you know, I have to choose, am I going to do what God is calling me to do? Or am I going to just take a job and go and work somewhere and I actually have a degree uh, but I felt that the Lord says, Joseph, this is what I want you to do. So it's a, it's a big step of faith for me to do it. So that's why every comment, every, you know, five or ten dollar that someone just give in a, um, in a PayPal, it's, it makes such a big difference for me because that helps me and motivates me and supports me. So that I can also do what God is calling me to do. All right. So that was my story. So I want to this morning or this afternoon, just sit here with Kimi. And we're just going to minister to, to uh, 10 people. Um, we'll do the same thing I'll, I, I told Ian and Charmaine. That they, are, they can come. Uh, they're not going to be here this weekend. Uh, but they can also come and we'll prophesy tomorrow to 10 people again. But then tomorrow night we'll go live and we'll prophesy maybe to 10 or 20 people. We're just going to keep going. Um, so I just felt, especially with this accident, I'm not going to let the devil hold me back. I'm going to actually put the, the, the car into the next gear and, and just keep going. All right. So that's, that's my story. Uh, let's start with Amanda Kutzer. Okay. So Amanda, uh, when I was praying about you, uh, the Lord showed me, uh, the glory of God being poured over you like oil. And I saw how your whole face was, was made new. So, um, so Amanda, I've never seen you in person, uh, but I know they've had these ads um, always on TV. When I was young, we, we had a TV. Uh, these days, we, we're not connected to a TV. But um, they had these ads where the women put on all these uh, creams and then they, they look, look younger. Uh, and, and I know in the Bible also of Sarah, the Lord uh, made Sarah young so that she could have a child, although she was 90 years old. And I just see how the Lord put that oil of God over you and how you just start to glow and you, you look younger. That's what the Lord showed me. Okay, Amanda, the Lord shows me like this field of grain and how the Lord is, is, is going through and he's picking out the best wheat. So I see how he's looking at one. He's like, no, not this one. Looking at this one, he's like, yes, I'll put that. And he, and he makes you bread. And the Lord says that this will take time, but he is making you and he is preparing a blessing for you that will come forth like like it'll just like if you open the oven the bread's not ready and all of a sudden it's like this big so the Lord is saying that there is a, there is something coming that he is preparing for you and he says be patient because the Lord is working towards perfection with this I see this gift that the Lord is, is, is giving to you be blessed hey Amanda God bless you so the next word is for Darshan so Darshan the Lord shows me um, a bag like a sower uh, in the old days they had the bag that they hang around them then they would take the seeds with their hands and they would sow uh, the seeds uh, and then hopefully they sow in the in the trenches where they duck uh, for the seeds to fall and then they close the ground it rains and then they have a harvest and I see how the Lord is giving you the word of God the word of faith a uh, revelation out of the word of God and an intimacy and also an anointing on your life to just sow the seeds. So Darsan, I don't know if you even a pre preacher, uh, but I, I see how you are like that sower that sows the word and how you preach the word and how the Lord is just giving you every year a bigger harvest. God bless you Darsan. Amen, Darshan, the Lord shows me how, how you are still reaching out to the Lord, how he, how you are coming to Him and you are asking Him for help, that these amazing resources that He has given to you are not replacing the Lord in your life, that you are still 
wanting to build the relationship even though the Lord shows me how your relationship with him is, is, is pretty strong but how you still want to grow closer and closer to the Lord how because what we know about God and even like now and I and, and for you is it's just the tip of the iceberg what the Lord has to to offer this is he is amazing and he wants you to continue to reach out and build this relationship and come to him first be blessed all right awesome thank you Darshan so officially Mana what the Lord is saying to me uh, is two story houses two stories container two reservoirs the one reservoir is on the outside uh, in your life and the other is a war is on the inside of your spirit so on the outside I felt that the Lord is just going to supernaturally drop uh, finances resources connections networks into your life so that you can fill up that storage that reservoir that container and I feel there is a time where the Lord says now you can use that resources uh, but now is a time to to, to build up the reservoir. It's almost like you build a buffer so that at that time when it's now the planting season, your, your storehouse is full of seeds, uh, you have the capital, you can go forward with that opportunity that the Lord gives to you. So that's the natural. In, an, in, in, in the supernatural, the Lord shows me in your spirit a reservoir uh, that's inside of you of the Holy Spirit and of the gifting of God. And I know that what Paul said to Timothy, he said, stir up that gift of God that's in you. And I feel that the Lord says that reservoir is not only just a, a space for the glory of God to sit in, but it's like a, a whirlpool that's stirring on the inside of you. And how you sometimes cry, how you sometimes laugh, how you sometimes feel healing, how the, the Lord renews you. And I feel as the, the anointing and the Spirit of God move in your life, He's making everything new and He's bringing restoration and He's uh, bringing you for, forward. It's like someone didn't even know you and you, you come forth. God bless you. Have Shimana, the Lord shows me how, how how he says like as you have been born again that your that your DNA has changed. When you, the Lord shows me how how if you haven't been and been baptized yet, but be baptized, that that old man dies and that the new will rise up. Somebody who is who is who is dead to themselves and lives for the Lord. The Lord says that your identity is found in Him. Do not listen to what the world is calling you to what um just what what labels that people have placed on you you are the lords you have been bought with a price and he will tell you who you are and you can even look at your gifts what are you good at and then you will see where the lord wants you to be because he gave you those gifts for a reason be blessed all okay, right so uh next word is for angela so angela the lord shows me a big house and this house didn't have electricity so then the electrician came and he started install. He first did like one or two, three or three rooms, uh, the stove and the kitchen with the lights and the plugs, and and he put all of that on one or two circuit breakers. But then he started to do some of the other rooms, and he put more circuit breakers, and then he do more rooms. And as he finishes each room, he adds another circuit breaker for the plugs and the lights in that room. And and then what the Lord showed me. He showed to me how knowledgeable you are, how much gifting you are, how much training you had in your life. And it's almost as if you like the sponge. You're just learning new things. You're absorbing all of it. And it's as if you're putting electricity in all those areas of your life. But right now, the breakers are still only on, on that first section. Although you are putting electricity and the knowledge and the know-how and the experience in the other rooms, you're not using those uh, because these ones are enough for you right now. But I felt that the Lord says, I'm going to take things to the next level. I'm going to start using the giftings, the knowledge, the skills, the experience that's in your life. And I'm going to start switching on more of those breakers into your life so that you can fulfill the fullness of the potential of the call that God has on your life. God bless you. 
and Angela, the Lord shows me how He's working in you internally, how He is fixing like your, like your physical body, He's cleansing your blood. The Lord shows me how He's helping to align your hormones properly and even how He is He's picking out. The Lord shows me how in your hands and in, and in your feet that how the Lord is picking out toxins in your body and that He is coming and He is healing you from the inside out. And the Lord says that that for you that this healing is going to come this needs to be a two-way thing the lord is working but he says he wants you to work what are you engaging in are you engaging in in a lot of technology in a lot of unhealthy foods or are you taking care of this vessel are you engaging in the lord who is true food who is true life the lord is saying that he is coming to do a work in you but he wants to partner with you be blessed hey angela god bless you so the next one is uh son eliza Strydom. Okay. Um, I hope I, I, I write your name. I, I went through the comments and I saw your name there. So uh, I apologize if I didn't have it right, but I think it is correct. Um, so what the Lord showed me uh, is a, it's like a storm that came. You know, like when a hurricane uh, or a tornado uh, go through a neighborhood and it goes through a house. Uh, and it breaks the windows uh, and, it, and it makes a big mess. And I saw that the enemy tried to come in like that flood and just come and bring destruction in your life. But now I see how the Lord is sending his angels and he's sending people that love you. And they come with the, the garbage bags and they clean everything up. They put in new windows. Uh, they put in new carpets. Uh, they take out all those cupboards that got wet and they put in new cupboards. Uh, they put in new electricity and they fixing the whole house so that it looks immaculate even better than it looked before. And so I felt that the Lord says, Daughter, the work of restoration that I'm doing into your life is going to be complete. It's going to be amazing. And so you don't have to cry. The Lord is uh, drying your tears. The Lord says, what you have lost in the past is going to be nothing in comparison to the gifts and to the restoration and the restitution that the Lord is going to bring back into the future. And the Lord says the enemy has been caught up. And the Lord says he's brought the enemy before his judge. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have to bring even the revenge or, or have unforgiveness in your heart. Just trust in the Lord. He's going to restore everything brand new. And in San Eliza, the Lord shows me in his presence we are hidden. The Lord shows me how you are working towards that 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 bubble surrounding you, that you engage in the presence of the Lord. The Lord shows me how he is picking you up out of that situation and he's holding you how you might be there now but know that you are being held by the lord and that i see how these these things are coming at you but they can't get past the bubble because you are engaging in the presence of the lord especially in the next couple months the lord is saying do not lose faith and do not let go of this constant Lord I'm holding on to you you are my strength the joy of the Lord is my strength that you give me peace that surpasses all understanding the Lord shows me how you must start to speak scripture over you to remind yourself to remind your body soul and spirit who God is and who he is in your life be blessed okay. God bless you. So the next word is for Shanae. So Shanae, I see how you the whole time hurt the sheep. And so all the sheep has to stay together. And you can't go faster. You can't go where you need to go. Because all the sheep is walking so slow. And now they're all coming together. And then I see how the Lord takes uh, uh, the, the shepherd's rod. And he takes it out of your hand. And he puts it into Ozzy's hand. Now Ozzy is uh, Shanae's husband. All right. And then what happened, I see how the Lord just gives you a little bit of freedom. And you're on this motorbike like a Holly Davidson. <laughs> and now you're going forward and you're going to explore and you pioneer and you see uh, this is not where we want to go. That's where you want to want to go. And you see new things and you experience new things. And then you come back to Ozzy and to the sheep and you say, you know what? I've looked there and there and this is actually not the direction we should go. We must make a, a 20 degree course correction. This is the way we need to go. And so I felt just like um, uh, Joseph in the Bible was sent forward in front of his brothers and his father. 
to, to Egypt and I got that land of Goshen uh, where all the supply of God was and where the blessing of God was. And, and he became, uh, uh, he came into that position of leadership and he could open up a way for the, his family. I felt that the Lord is going to use you like a Joseph and you're going to pioneer and open up a way. And as you know, the Lord shows me how, how you are like a fountain, how you are just bubbling over and the Lord says that I'm giving you new joy. I'm giving you joy that is going to come from the inside out, that is going to be contagious. How you, how you agree, Lord, I want to receive this. How you hold your hands open to receive this joy. The Lord shows me how you take off these heavy burdens, how you must physically like, like just to, like, uh, spiritual activation how you see yourself taking them all rubbing rubbing all of that all of that weight off you and you're putting on just the garment of praise to praise the Lord with with joy and not in not in a place of I need this so I'm gonna I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go and do this and then that step and then that step and then everything will be fine but you come to the Lord as a child wanting to wanting to have communion with her father to to engage in and just in fatherly, you know, like I see a fatherly dance that he is bringing out of you to become like that child full of joy and full of zeal for the Lord. Be blessed. Hey, awesome. God bless you. So, Dricky, what the Lord is showing me is three clay pots. Or, uh, sorry, but three pots. <laughs> the first one is a clay pot. The se second one was a brass pot. And then the third one was a silver pot. And what the Lord showed me is how he poured out the, the, the oil of God into the clay pot and that's your humility and that's that part of yours that are broken the part of yours that says but I will be a servant and I will allow my prayer my serving to be to the benefit of the whole family but then the Lord showed me how your your humility that clay pot is full and it will stay full and now the Lord is filling up the brass pot and I, and I felt the brass pot was the strength of God that is giving to you. And the Lord shows me the miracles that's going to flow out of your life. And how you're not only going to serve but, uh, uh, with, with, with service and help, but you're going to serve with power. It means you'll lay your hand on a sick. You'll prophesy you'll have the wisdom of God uh, upon your life. And I saw how the Lord comes and He washed because that brass pot was very dirty. And how He was washing it so that you can see uh, your own reflection on that brass pot. And you can see the reflection of God. And then finally, I, f I feel in your next season, and this is not right now, but in your next season, there's a silver pot. And a silver pot is a picture uh, of the glory of God that's radiating out of you. It's that authority of sonship. That the Lord is giving to you. The crown that he's giving unto you. And so there's a growth and there's a progression into your life. And so the Lord says, don't just stay with the clay pot. But now add that power and that reflection of God also into your life. Because the Lord says, in your hands is serving, but there's also power. And the Lord says, just like Jesus came as a servant, but he also came as the Son of God full of power. So the Lord wants you to be manifested both in serving and in power. Yes, the, Ricky, the first will be last and the last will be first. The Lord shows me how he is, how, he, how he's just reminding you that do not worry about what you eat or what you drink. Because he, I hear the Lord saying that everything you need is found in him. Everything you need is 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 found in him and how you just repeat that to yourself and how you speak that over your family everything we need is found in the lord that he will provide for us what we need and it's not always what we want or what we think we need but i see how you put on the mind of christ and the lord sets your thoughts on things above on things on, on what to do on not to be, not to be lazy on how to spend your time well to really start to to um to, the Lord shows me how you just start to, what's the word when light shines off you? Um, to radiate. To radiate, thank you. To radiate the gifts of God from inside you that they just start to pour out and then you see He's enough. It's enough when I pour out to the Lord and He and He pours into me. Be blessed. Oh, hey, awesome. Uh, Dricky, um, the next word is for Yolandi. All right, so Yolandi, uh, the Lord shows me uh, a delta of rivers and so how this delta uh, of rivers work is they usually start on mountains 
So mountains is in a spirit positions of authority. And then out of each one of these mountains flow a river and then all the rivers come together into one big river that then flows into the ocean. And I felt that the Lord says that he is connecting you with places, with people in high places, people in mountains. And maybe, uh, you, you know, the spring that starts in a mountain, is not a big river. And you say, but Lord, the vision you give me is this big river. And now I only see this uh, small spring. But I see how the different rivers come together. And, and I also feel that the rivers is not just you. It's you, but many other people also in ministry. And all of you come with your little streams together. And it forms a little bit of a bigger river. And then it forms a bigger of a river. And then it becomes part of that big Elijah company. That's going to bring back uh, the, the king. And it's going to bring back the authority of God. And it's going to bring uh, uh, the, the picture of what it looks like to be a son of God in his full authority. And so the Lord says, you just stay in the delta. So, you know, the, your one option is, is to stay in the little spring and, and follow the spring until it comes to the river. Uh, but it, it is a small spring, uh, but it's a fresh spring. Or the other option is to say, no, I'm going to uh, find out on a map where's the river and I'm going to go straight there to the, to the river. But then it fell to me, now you didn't join. Now you were on the sideline and you were not able to be in that river. So I felt that the, uh, the Lord says, you're going to be part of the mountains in your relationships and then out of you is going to flow that spring and then that spring is going to lead you to the big river so um that could take a little bit of patience uh, and it could take a little bit longer uh, but i feel that is the plan that god has for you so uh, my advice would be uh, be patient but the water that's flowing out of you is so pure and it's so cold and refreshing and it may be, you know, when, when you go up in a mountain, there's not hundreds of people there drinking from the, the river. It's usually hikers and people that want to ex ex appreciate that beauty. But when they drink that water, they feel, wow, it's so refreshing. And so I felt in the beginning, you may be not going to feel like so many people are drinking from the amazing fountain that's coming out of you. But you're going to see as you go down that river, more and more people are going to have access. And it's also going to be with the flow of all the other the ministries. God bless you. Yolani, the Lord shows me how you just start to walk. Um, you're just like marching in your room and how you step in to the presence of God and you create pathways into his presence and how you start to intercede. Lord, what you have, I want to, I want to give birth to here on earth. The Lord shows me how you just find those pathways to the Lord and how I see how you are physically marching and you are taking a step into his presence to know like in in any time of of hardships or you feel like there, there's this wall and we are not getting past this wall that you know lord i step into you into your strength into your resources and in this wall can't stand against the, the king of kings and the lord of lords it has to fall be blessed all right uh yulani god bless you um you are going to win you are victorious. Uh, so the next word is for Elizabeth. Elizabeth, the Lord shows me five seasons, which I interpret as five years. Now, I see these branches that carry these beautiful fruit, uh, heavy fruit, and, but the branches don't break. Now, I remember when I was a kid, we had a big apricot tree at our house. And when that apricot tree made apricots, we sometimes have branches that broke or they almost wanted to break so heavy are those branches we actually had to use um, uh, what is that, uh, um, supports to, to help those branches because it had the most beautiful big old apricots and it was so heavy but it, it was full mm -hmm. and, I, and I see this is how productive you uh, and even Christopher is going to be in your life but the five seasons is you bear all the fruit you can bear now. And then over the winter season, obviously the, the tree grows stronger. And then when the next growth season, the, the branches are thicker. So it can handle more, more of the fruit. And then again, you, you go to the max that you can handle. But it's not your potential. That's not where God wants you. 
Then you go through a winter season and then another growth season. And so five seasons in a row. It happens like that until your branches are so thick that you can bring forth the potential that the Lord has for you. And I felt that the Lord is not only wanting you to have fruit for your life and for Christopher's life, but the Lord wants you to have fruit that's going to impact thousands of people and He's going to make you very influential. And he's also going to put you in a position where you're going to be a great blessing to your, your family again and to the next generation. But I felt that the Lord says, grow this five years. Don't give up. Keep persevering. Keep uh, uh, um, uh, enduring. And you know, sometimes when we see a winter season, so there's no leaves, nothing is growing. We think, oh no, I'm, I'm in a dead space. God doesn't love me. But actually what happens, trees need a winter season because that's when that soft tissue of the branches become hard and strong so that when the next layer of soft tissue grow again, so then there is that hardness in the inside that supports it so it can grow bigger and bigger. And so that's why in, a, in, a, in the growth of a plant or a tree, uh, winter is equally as important as the summer, although the summer is exciting because you see all the stuff, uh, but the winter uh, where it's maybe a little bit drier and, and, and it's colder and there's nothing growing there, it's equally as important. And I just felt that the Lord says, don't get discouraged when you feel I'm going through a, a, a winter season um, because the springtime is coming and you're going to see growth again, but both of them are, is equally or are equally important. So, but I felt five years, uh, don't, don't think, okay, the breakthrough is in 2025. Um, think that breakthrough is in 2029 and, and 2030. Although every single year you'll see more breakthrough and more blessing uh, and, and, and more results. But I felt the Lord is putting you on a five year path. And then at that stage, it's going to be, be so much over flow that there's going to be massive influence and blessing that's going to flow out of you god bless you amen elizabeth the lord shows me how how you are just blowing in the wind and how he is he is teaching you how to be still in his presence and how the lord shows me how he's settling the water inside of you because he, he he created this body there's water there there's blood there's liquid in this body and the lord shows me how he's coming to settle that and that he's bringing you peace he is wanting to release his peace into you and how you can start to almost like I also saw how you were also like that that tree and how the Lord is coming to to put what it is, is in him to start let that English is hard <laughs> let that grow inside of you so he is he has planted a seed and that seed is going to manifest into you and that seed is really there for peace in the Lord be blessed okay Elizabeth God loves you very much. All right, Christopher. So the Lord shows me a boat, a big sailing boat, a cargo carrier. And this cargo carrier has got a route that it, that it uh, shifts goods back and forth. Okay. Uh, the, the captain, you're the captain, very good captain. You understand the weather, you understand the storms, you know which route to take in what season, what time of the year, so that you can get your cargo safe to the other side. But then a big fleet of ships that belongs to a massive company says, don't you want to join us? And so then you start in a consulting capacity, like a subcontractor, and you help to ship. And then later on, you become one of the, the ships in the fleet. And then you become one of the owners of the ships in the fleet. And so there's this whole progression that the Lord shows me that's happening with you. And I absolutely believe that it has to do with the relationships, with networks, and with finances. That the Lord is opening up a big opportunity. But it's not going to all look the final way at first. It's going to be progressive. And the more you trust them, the more... You tr uh, they trust you and then here and there there's people that are in the mix that is not trustworthy and God kind of alerts you because he's given you discernment and wisdom to say I can't deal with this person and the Lord moves the pieces on the, the chessboard until you can merge and until you can also be an owner 
of the bigger shipping company. So this, so, so I just see this process, and and I just felt that the Lord is today putting on you a captain mantle, a wisdom mantle, to be able to steer through this maze so that you can overcome. Okay, Christopher, the Lord shows me how there's a lot of pressure on you to, to provide for your family and, and for your business and for a man and a husband. That's a, that's, a, that's a good pressure because the Lord wants you to be like the priest of the home. But I hear the Father saying that you will do more for your family in the Word and at the feet of Jesus and, and corporately going into the presence of the Lord than you can working um like a like 60 hours a week you will do more for your family and for and for yourself when you when you are after the presence of god the lord shows me how you in your um um a quiet time with the lord and that time is so important the lord wants you to to maybe add a few more few more minutes to that time that you sit at the feet of jesus and that you really a bask in his glory and his healing and you let him teach you in the word it says that he is the teacher and that he will and he is the healer and the holy spirit is the comforter and the counselor the lord says that in these times that you will be needing counsel and he says that he is open and that time that you spend with the lord for you as the priest of the home is going to build your family up so so much stronger be blessed Okay, awesome. So, uh, Christopher, God bless you. Uh, family, um, we minister to 10 people. I I'm going to try <laughs> to minister over this next few weeks, every week or every day to 10 people. That's going to be my plan. And I'm going to trust the Lord that I'll have the time and the strength. So today, um, uh, I sleep most of today because... Actually, the doctor said I need to be sedated. I need to sleep all the time. But I said to Kimi, let's just take a little bit of time. So I woke up, put my shirt on, and, and, and we had lunch. Kimi made lunch for us, very nice. Carrots and chicken. Uh, and, um, and we sat here and prophesied, so I'm going to sleep now again. But I'm going to, if God can help me, try to every single day over this next two weeks, prophesy to 10 people. So if you really in your heart feel you would like to receive a word, you're welcome to put your name in the comments. Remember 10 is 10. It's not 11 or 12, it's just 10. Okay? So um, uh, I'll, I'll see how many people I can accommodate. Uh, also, uh, if you in your heart feel, Joseph, I want to support you. And, and I'm not talking about you have to give me thousands of dollars. I'm talking about five dollars. If you feel in your heart, well, I just want to bless uh, this guy then uh, I would encourage you in, this, in the description there is, um, there is a PayPal or something. You can just click on it and you can sell something if you want to. Um, it's always uh, wonderful to, to receive something. But, I mean, uh, we prophesy because we God told us to do it. So we don't, we, we, that's the reason why we do it. Okay, so we love each one of you. And tomorrow... Um, you're going to see a video coming out of 10 people that we prophesied to again. I'm going to get Ian and Samai to do with me. But they're not going to be here tomorrow night. So tomorrow night it's going to be me and Kimi. And we're going to go live. Uh, and uh, we'll, uh, my stamina is not that long. So we'll probably only prophesy to about 20 people. Uh, but that's our plan for tomorrow. Um, I just want to say we love you. Um, the only way you can accurately prophesy to someone you got to love Jesus and you got to love people. And so that's why I just want to say I love Jesus and I love you. Yes. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. Nice. Oh.